What's going on guys? Welcome back. We're back. Today we're going to be watching another Gers Gazak video. I found this really cool one called What if you detonated a nuclear bomb in the Marianas Trench? That sounds awesome because I love the Marianas Trench and just deep mysteries generally. Um, and then uh, so the, the uh, startup that I've been telling you guys about, it's coming along nicely. So getting excited to tell you guys about it. But anyway, let's get straight into the video. Um, so I've got to change this view. Let's not forget to do that. Okay, I need to sit up a bit. That's better. Let's do this. Okay, what if you detonated? Yeah, I've got the glasses back on today to, you know, it balances out my stupid haircut, I think. Okay, let's do it. What would happen if we detonated humanity's most powerful nuclear weapon at the deepest point of the ocean? I don't think much will happen because the pressure down there is so intense, which is, you know, a lot. That's like, it's something like stacking jumbo jets on top of you. You see what I mean? Like, that's a lot. So imagine detonating a nuclear bomb in that kind of pressure. My guess is not much. For sure, tsunamis hundreds of meters high would destroy coastal cities, earthquakes would level countries, new volcanoes would bring us nuclear winter. Maybe even Earth could be ripped apart or thrown out of orbit. No, well, almost. Currently, Earth's deepest known point is inside the Mariana Trench. The Mariana Trench... Yes, I guess it is It is the deepest point. It's like, what is it, 10,900 meters or something? Uh, but it's actually not the closest point to the center of the Earth, if you didn't know that. Because the Earth is bulged at the equator, uh, there's, a, there's a region in the Arctic that's actually closer to the center of the planet, which is pretty cool. Um, I'm pretty, I've, I've always been pretty fascinated by the Marianas Trench, so I know a bit about it. Um, and the, the deepest spot in the Marianas Trench is called Challenger Deep. Then there's another spot. Um, what is it called? Sirena Deep, I'm pretty sure. And w there's actually, I think uh, to date, only two humans, I could be wrong, have been to the very bottom, which is pretty cool. There's a guy called in the 1960s, I think 1960 exactly, a guy called Picard. And if you like Star Trek, Picard was actually named after this guy, which is awesome. I'll tell you more about him soon. I know a lot about this guy. He was actually really important to uh, the Apollo missions and just space flight in general, which is pretty crazy. Trench is a very deep valley right at the edge of two tectonic plates that looks like an upside down mountain. That's Kilometers almost three times deeper than the dark grave of the Titanic. Wow. It's one of the yeah, last places on Earth for humans there. to explore. Pitch black and under a thousand atmospheres of pressure, it's a relatively pristine environment thanks to the absence of humans. A great place for our nuclear test. Wouldn't surprise me though if there's a lot of rubbish down there already. We'll use the most powerful nuclear bomb humans have ever exploded, the RDS-220 hydrogen bomb, or Tsar Bomber. Mm. Its explosion Russians love to go big. was so massive that its shockwave traveled around the Earth three times and its mushroom cloud stretched 56 kilometers into the sky. Intense. Its shockwave was strong enough to destroy everything in a thousand square kilometers, its fireball hot enough to burn the rubble. Bombs like this release such an enormous amount of energy at once that they could boil away an entire lake. And if we set off a nuclear bomb Let's in the Mariana that. Trench, that's exactly what happens. Hmm. Let's pull the trigger. In the first few microseconds... These videos, the it's just so nice to look at. They're so well made. Nuclear fuel undergoes its chain reaction and explodes with the power of 50 megatons of TNT. A blinding flash of light illuminates the darkness of the trench for the first time in history. The heat of the explosion produces a cavity, a flaming bubble of water vapor, radioactive nuclei, and the remains of very unlucky fish. The bubble grows quickly as it vaporizes the water around it. Yeah, so there, there is actually like fish down there, which is really crazy considering the pressure. Um, when that Picard guy went to the bottom, he noted that he, he told everyone that he saw some shrimp and fish and everyone was, it was pretty controversial at the time because like the, deepest uh fish had been seen was like 
I think it was like eight kilometers or something. Um, so yeah, there is fish down there, which is crazy. There's something like 200 different, uh, species down there. I'm pretty sure. Um, but yeah, a bit more about that Picard guy. So like that was in 1960. It was two guys that went down there and it took them something like, uh, five hours to go down. And then they were down there for 20 minutes. And, uh, that was challenger deep where they went and the window started to crack. And so they started to come straight back up after 20 minutes. It took them three hours to get back to the surface. It's unbelievable. And you, you might've heard of Guam, you know, that little place that's technically, uh, you know, owned, not owned, but like, I don't know, the U S have control of it. Uh, and there's a bunch of islands around. It's fun, funny story. I actually met a guy. I remember when I was like 15 on Xbox live, you know, I'm just playing halo and he's from Guam. I'm like, what the hell is Guam? You know, me being from Australia, another island. Uh, and there's something like 15 different islands around uh, Guam. The, I think they're called the Mariana Islands. And the US, you know, operates all of them. So technically the US, oh, I don't know if you could say owns, but the Mariana Trench is like controlled by the US. Of course. Oh, I forgot. James Cameron's actually been down there. I can't remember when, like 2012. So... You know, Hollywood directors and their fascination with the trench. He made a movie, didn't he, about like some underwater aliens, The Abyss. Great movie. He's probably looking for some aliens down there. Um, no, I love James Cameron. I'm excited for Avatar Two. Uh, yeah, there's a lot to say about Mariana's Trench. There's a lot of birthday candles to blow out down there. It's something like 180 million years old. It's one of the most ancient seabeds in the world. Um, so that's pretty crazy. Anyway, let's keep watching. They've just detonated the bomb. The pressure of the bubble the is immense, plowing outwards as if there's nothing in the way, sending off a shockwave that will be felt by seismic stations and whales around the world. So the Tsar bomb on the Richter scale would have been like 8.1. This thing was really big. And some fun facts about the Tsar bomb. It was actually meant to be 100 uh, megatons. Uh, that was its full yield, but... They decided, the Soviets decided to go with 50 megatons, luckily. Um, there's so much, it's quite a crazy story, this bomb. They built it in like three to four months. <laughs> You'd think something like this, you know, would be built rather, you know, it would take a while. And uh, the story is just unbelievable. They they detonated it in the Novaya Zemla region. Um, and it's still like 70 to 130 times more radioactive than normal today so um, those poor polar bears and i remember the the guy that it was pretty much built uh, because a russian diplomat in a meeting with the u.s uh got annoyed or something and said like you know kuska's mother to america which is like i think a russian euphemism for we'll show you and so they rush out and build this huge bomb and so this bomb the power it had, it's there's more explosive power there than all the bombs unleashed combined in World War II. That's crazy. And it's like 1,400 times the bombs more powerful than Hiroshima bomb, which is just unbelievable. So I reckon we... Oh, there's also the story behind when they dropped it. <laughs> so these poor uh, Soviet pilots, there was two of them, and... They, had, they got told they had a 50% chance of survival <laughs> and they put a parachute on their plane because after the bomb exploded, they're expecting, you know, it to be pretty gnarly. <laughs> and it was, uh, they got about 28 miles away from the bomb before like the shock wave, uh, hit them. And then there was a fireball as well. Um, so hold on that story. The, 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 the mushroom cloud of this bomb was reached like seven times the height of Mount Everest. That's like entering the, the mesosphere. So well into the stratosphere. And so this, the, all this, you know, stuff, the shock wave, it was detonated in the sky, by the way. So not on the ground and it reached the pilots. I can't remember how long it took. Um, and the, their plane instantly fell, uh, I think a thousand kilometers. Sorry, that, no, a kilometer. I can't remember. It fell a long way, all right? <laughs> and somehow they survived. 
Um, and then the one of the pilots, the, the, the main pilot, though, he died not too long later uh, at the age of 53. So, you know, probably some of the radioactive substances got to him. Um, anyway, let's keep going. I, there's a, so much to this bomb. It's really intense. And then, almost as fast one. as it emerges, it stops. On the surface of the Earth, this fireball bubble would grow to 10 kilometers the second after it's detonated, as the atmosphere barely puts up a fight to hold it back. So that's the fireball. But the pressure at the bottom of the Mariana Trench is enormous. With 11 kilometers of water overhead, being in the Mariana Trench is like being crushed by a hydraulic press from every direction. Thousand times Here, a second the after surface. the detonation, our bubble is about a kilometer across, when, oddly enough, it starts to shrink. See, it weighs more. The bubble overextends itself, losing pressure as it expands, until the water turns it back, recompressing it. The tug of war between the fiery death bubble and water goes back and forth a few times, the bubble shrinking and growing, until eventually the bubble loses for good. You, so it's actually, the temperature down the bottom there is in, interesting. I think it's like uh, 40 degree Fahrenheit, which is pretty cold, frigid. Um, but there are but there's heaps of hydrothermal, hydrothermal vents around there. And they spew out water at like 700 degree Fahrenheit. So if you were near that, not like, you know, right in it, you'd, you'd be melted. <laughs> but, you know, you're probably going to be crushed by the pressure well before that anyway. Uh, but I bring this up because that's these are the places we actually think uh, Earth uh, life might have first began in hydrothermal vents at the bottom of oceans. Um, and that's kind of what we're, you know, when we explore the other worlds, uh, you know, if there's an underwater ocean on Europa under the ice, uh, you know, we think there could be hydrothermal vents and there could be maybe life down there. Um, but it's a bit different on places like Europa. You've got the, uh, the gravitational tug of Jupiter. So, you know, that can swirl the water and keep it warm. Um, anyway. The pressure around it is too great and turbulent water begins to chop it up. It becomes something like the underwater equivalent of a mushroom cloud as it disintegrates into many smaller hot and radioactive bubbles drifting upwards. And as our mighty destructive blast rises to the surface, it does basically nothing. Just a small wave and a bubbling plume of radioactive warm water in the Pacific. No tsunami will wash away Japan or California although boats and whales in the area might have a bad time. The radioactive fallout will be diluted into the Pacific after a few days, although a fair amount of radioactive water and salt makes it to the atmosphere, where it collects and then rains down again. Even if the wind blows the fallout directly towards the Philippines, the worst of it probably happens over the oceans. But clearly, the real danger comes from our explosion triggering earthquakes and volcanoes, right? No. Even if we detonated the bomb right in the trench at the exact point where tectonic plates touch, probably not. The explosion would vaporize a part of the sea floor and turn a lot of sand into glass, but most of the energy goes into the water, not seismic waves. Earthquakes are already quite common at tectonic plate boundaries and earthquakes with as much seismic energy as our bomb happen a few times a year without triggering any sort of apocalypse. But maybe it will affect the Earth's orbit. Since no mass is taken away or added to the Earth, our orbit is completely unaffected. Also, there have been well over a thousand nuclear tests in the last 70 years, and that didn't change. So the nuclear fallout of this Tsar bomb, if it was at its full yield of 100 megaton, Remember, it was only at 50. Um, they estimated that it would have been 25% of all of the total fallout of all the uh, nuclear bombs ever tested, just from this one bomb. 25%. That's intense. Uh, and like I said before, they only ever made one of these because it pretty much near killed the pilots. And yeah, it's just overkill a bit our orbit, so why would this time be different? The strongest forces humanity can unleash are laughable compared to the forces of nature. The planet is too big, it doesn't care. So what happens to us if we detonate a nuclear weapon really deep in the ocean? Pretty much nothing. 
Did you know that every bird in our vi- Well, he said that last bit, you know, our ability to go up against nature is laughable, but that's not necessarily true. You know, we could create bigger bombs with antimatter. Uh, and, you know, if we work out fusion and things like that, you know, the level of destruction we could cause in the future is pretty immense. Um, but anyway, let's not talk about that or give anyone any ideas. That's the end of the video. That video is amazing. Let's give him a like. Oh, we should go read the comments. Let's see. I love how Curse Gazette always makes you feel like the earth is going to be destroyed and then they tell you, nah, it's probs fine. What I love so much about Curse Gazette is they make anything understandable to the listener. If they say it will explode the force of 50 megatons of TNT, they make sure to explain just exactly what the result will look like. That's, that's true. He does a good job. It's a relatively pristine environment. No. Uh, yeah, I mentioned a brief comment like that, but... um. I remember recently we found a lot of trash down there <laughs> and the water's, yeah, pretty bad. Looks like a good place to blow up a nuke. Yeah. It helps us explain things. Clowns around in the background or dies a horrible and avoidable death. Okay. The strongest force of America and Alicia laughable. That's unbelievably reassuring. <laughs> what else? Have we got any funny? Ripped all the birds and animals in the animation. Yeah, I was thinking that too. Uh, I like how he explains so much in the end, it's just, uh, nothing. <laughs> I'm wondering, for the detonator to work so deep in the ocean, the body of the bomb would have to be a lot thicker to resist the water pressure. Oh, this is interesting. It was really big. Like, when they put it on the plane, it there was some massive problems, because the plane was quite small. What was the plane called? The, the ton... I can't remember. Um... This bomb was huge. It was like, how, what, what was the weight? Like 3,000 ton? Or was it 3 ton? I can't remember. It might have been like 3 ton. 3 metric tons. That's a lot. Uh, and it was really quite big. Really wide. So that's a really good point. What could you do? You just encase it in, you know. I mean, like, you know, we've sent humans down there. So just put it in one of those little submarines. All right? Problem solved. Wouldn't it additionally decrease the power of the explosion by a significant value? Hmm. Not really. A little bit, but not really. Uh, the planet is too big. It does not care. <laughs> it's great. Just discovered you guys. Great work. Biggest weapon of destruction ever created by humanity. Explodes. Earth. Oh no. Anyway. What would happen if we detonate a nuclear bomb? Godzilla. <laughs> This guy probably got an A triple plus in science and A triple plus for anime. Yeah, probably. But like I've said in another video, it's probably a team of people, you know? I bet you. I was having a similar conversation with my housemates the other day. He was pondering whether a nuclear bomb detonated the center of the earth would be catastrophic. No. <laughs> I pointed out that compared to the massive forces and energy stored in the earth core, even the biggest nuke would be little more than a blip. It would do almost nothing in the center of the earth's core. That's another whole discussion. Earth's core is awesome. Just here to hear the sound effect. Blah, 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 blah. There is a possibility that the extreme pressure will make the reaction last longer. Increasing the efficiency and power far beyond the normal 17% efficiency. Just a wild guess, but it could... Uh, no, not true. What's up? Yes, but it would lose... Yeah, I, and that was making me think of, um, they were worried if they went to 100 megaton that there'd be some serious after effects of the bomb and that's why they didn't. They thought uh, <laughs> they could, uh, I can't quite remember, but yeah, they were worried about something. <laughs> that's why they didn't. They, they got scared. Just like this show, your computer can be turned into a stone, figuratively speaking, by hackers via light. So if you don't want that, you should definitely get a VPN. And one of the best VPNs out there is Atlas VPN. And they were kind enough to sponsor this video, so a huge thanks to them. Currently, Atlas VPN are running a huge discount on their three-year deal for $1.99 a month, the 30-day money-back guarantee. The deal won't last for long, so make sure to check it out by clicking the link in the video description below. They have this really neat data breach monitor feature. You insert your email address, and this tool scans the internet to see if it ended up in any recorded data breaches, data dumps, 
that includes your email, names, passwords, or other sensitive information. If you enable notifications, it ensures you're aware of such incidents as it gives you a heads up to change your passwords before someone can steal your accounts. Atlas VPN is supported on any device and it gives you a 30 day money back guarantee on all subscription purchases. Thanks again to Atlas VPN. And if you enjoy my content, make sure you check out the huge discount they're running on their three year deal for just $1.99 a month with a 30 day money back guarantee. The deal won't last for long, so make sure you check it out by clicking the link in the video description below. Let's get back to the video. Okay, that'll do guys. Hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure you subscribe. Catch you guys next time.